Welcome, Welcome to, to Adults Adult Loading, a wellness podcast for young adults still, still trying to figure, figure it out. The content of this podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only, and is not intended to be a substitute for professional psychological, psychiatric, or medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified mental health providers for any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or mental disorder. You. Yeah, you. Let's be real. You got here by accident. Your looks and connections are the only reason you're here. Yeah, you earn great grades each year, but this is the year you're going to fail. Why even bother getting close to them? They don't really like you. (laughs) Why would they? No, just no. You charge them full price for that? Uh Uh-uh. Give them a discount. Or better yet, make it free, cause... Sure, you're an adult. But not an adult adult. What? What's all that whispering? Oh, it's just me. Who? You who? Imposter syndrome. What? Imposter syndrome. Listen, I'm gonna need you to speak up because ain't nobody could hear you over all that whispering. (sighs) Not another person acting like they don't know me. It's imposter syndrome. Hey everyone, so we're back with a new episode. It's Emma. I'm Marissa. And today we're shedding light on, you guessed it, imposter syndrome. Those who don't know, imposter syndrome is this belief that you're inadequate and incompetent despite proof and legitimate evidence that You're quite skilled and quite successful. So when we think of imposter syndrome, it's really this way that you explain an event to yourself. And this event can be positive or negative. For example, let's say you got a job, good pay, lots of benefits in an area that you love. I know that's right. (laughs) Is your first thought, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I got this job. I work so hard. I'm really excited. Or are you thinking, Wow, I must have just gotten lucky. Maybe it's some type of mistake. They didn't they didn't read through my resume. Maybe it's a mix-up. I wonder if they know. I wonder if they realize I'm a fraud. These are the type of thoughts that you have when you have imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think we don't often talk about this experience enough. Sometimes we feel like we're this other. And so we don't talk about the things we're experiencing. It's almost like it's a cycle now. Because we don't talk about them, we don't know other people are experiencing it. Because we don't know other people are experiencing it, we're kind of afraid to talk about it. When imposter syndrome is actually quite common, about 70% of people have experienced imposter syndrome at some point in their lives or will experience it. So yeah. it's really common, guys. And I think the fact that it's so isolating is is one of the hardest parts about imposter syndrome because it really mm-hmm. applies to so much facets of your life. So even though I use the example with the job, mm-hmm. it's so much more than just that, you know? It could happen when you're at school. Yes, the workplace, even social interactions among mm-hmm. your friends, your relationships and just your roles in general so you know this whole idea of being an adult am I an adult I don't feel like an adult when am I gonna be an adult you know all these questions it kind of speaks to the way we question ourselves and just this feeling of just waiting for someone to call you out because you didn't meet up to these expectations definitely and like you know it manifests in so many ways and Dr. Valerie Young, a specialist on imposter syndrome, actually talks about how there are five subcategories of imposter syndrome and how like each of these categories explains what a person needs in order to feel competent and to feel successful. So the first one is one I think a lot of people are familiar with, the perfectionist. And for those who fall into this category, they feel like their work has to be 100% perfect all the time and things Mm -hmm. have to be done exactly the way they want them to be done or the way they feel it needs to be done for whatever task to go well Mm -hmm. and then you have the superhuman for them they have high expectations of themselves they feel like they have to constantly be doing more and more and more to get to this level that everybody else is at you're constantly pushing yourself pushing yourself pushing yourself can impact your physical health and your mental health and also other aspects of your life will be neglected. So true. So true. Mm-hmm. 
Another one is the natural genius. And for Mm -hmm. them, the expectations make them feel that when they're accomplishing a new task, they should be successful at it really easily. You know, and there's no learning curve. It's just, I started it and I'm an expert, you know? And they feel like when they're accomplishing something, it actually takes a bit more effort. You know, that's mm-hmm. when those feelings of incompetency really, really comes out for them. Mm-hmm. And then there's even like the soloist and... That is exactly how it sounds. So it's like, you know what? Like for me to feel like I could do this, like I'm successful, like I'm competent. I don't need any help from anybody. I can't ask for help. Even if I really, really need it, I can't ask for any help. I got to do it on my own or else I'm an imposter. I'm a fraud and I should just stop now. And then finally we have the experts. Mm -hmm. They place their value on what they know and what they can do. And it's just to the point where this desire to always be so knowledgeable at anything that they apply themselves to, it just makes them feel as if they'll never be able to know enough. It's very likely that you've experienced one of these at any point in your life. So even just looking at the the subcategories now, I can see Mm -hmm. at times when I felt like the experts or the soloist. And it just really goes back to how your environment can bring up certain types of feelings for you. I know, especially in grad school, feeling like I should know certain things and I had to know certain things was a big one for me. That, that came up a lot because it was like you're in this environment where mm-hmm. your intelligence is just so valued and it's so important. So when you feel like you don't know the answer or it's not coming to you um, as quickly as it should, you know, you start to feel like, oh my God, did they did I really deserve to be here? Because, you know, mm-hmm. grad school is very competitive. I think we only had 10, 10 people in our class. 10 so, people. Yeah. So when you feel like, oh, my God, everyone was able to just answer that question. And I'm here like, um, what? Child. Anyway, so. Didn't even have a clue what the answer was. It's just like. It's hollow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God, I'm a fraud. <laughs> classroom and pull me out oh definitely and like I didn't know about imposter syndrome until grad school like you actually introduced that to me like I overheard you and some of our other like colleague turned friends talking about it I'm like what are y'all talking about and you're just like (laughs) yeah yeah imposter syndrome you know and at first I'm like okay I don't know what that is (laughs) but y'all were talking more about it and I'm like oh I could ask y'all like so how y'all feeling during the program and then I heard more of you know I'm actually like struggling how did I even get here and then I felt like I could say like oh my gosh me too like, <laughs> I feel like I'm good on paper but then when I got here everybody's like no no please no no listen <laughs> one that definitely comes up for me is the perfectionist I do my work really well but there's actually a downfall to that y'all like it can be so hard to just keep going when you don't know I distinctly remember being an undergrad and um, my friend called me up and she was just like, what's up? Do you think we could do something later on? I'm just there like, I'm still doing this assignment and I've been at it for a couple of days. And she's just like, oh, like, how far are you? I'm like, paragraph two. And then she's just like, is the introduction included in that? And I'm just like, just, I gotta go. <laughs> in my mind, I can't move on until this paragraph is perfect. And so that's like so hard to do, especially when you don't know the topic. Yeah, I think the perfectionist is one that a lot of people could relate to because, you know, you just feel like if you don't do things this certain way, then you're not going to get the result that you're used to getting. I did it this way in the past. I got my A or I got the job, I got the position or the relationship was successful. And so I need to keep on doing it this way if I still want to have that result. And it makes us very rigid. You're not really flexible and open to maybe doing things in a different way. Exactly. Where you could probably still get the same results. It's two sides of the coin. So, you know, yes, people like to use it in a way to say, like almost to speak to their standard of work, but it Mm -hmm. very much leads to procrastination. Also, what happens a lot with the whole like super human one, when you're just trying to relax, you're like, this is a waste of time. I could be doing all this work. I think that is that, that easily comes in environments where I have to be on par or better than the persons in my group. Mm-hmm. And so it makes you feel like I need to do more because I need to prove and show why I deserve to be here. 
I think it's really important, you know, to think about these subcategories and what is it telling us about how we approach certain things? You know, what are the rules that we have and why do we feel that way? And then the thing about it is too, I think what we need to remember is like, there are pluses to knowing all of these things, you know, constantly getting more certifications and, you know, getting more training and so having a high standard of work. But with these subgroups, the ideal is not attainable. Being a superhuman, we cannot do it all by ourselves. We need mm-hmm. to rely on persons. We, we do. Be a soloist. You know, we are not going to be an expert at everything. You know, this is what we have Google for. You can't <laughs> know everything. And I think it's just something that's just really relevant for young adults as we come into this period of transition in our lives. We are still figuring out what it means to be successful. What does that mean for me? Is it going to look like my friends? Is it going to look like my family members? You know, how am I going to achieve this? If I just follow these rules and these expectations that I set for myself, I'm going to be successful. But if these are things that are unattainable and I never attain it, how is this going to affect my mental health? How I view my achievements? How I view myself? And a lot of times if you set these high expectations for yourself and you know what happens when you set them? If they're unrealistic, you don't meet them. Like You do not achieve them. And then you feel this shame. You feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm an imposter. I'm a fraud. I shouldn't be here. These are thoughts that we keep to ourselves most of the time. And our loved ones, the people at work, a lot of times they have no idea of the expectations that we are setting for ourselves. And so for them, they look at us and they might think, this person is so successful. This person is an excellent partner, excellent friend. Or I'm so proud of them for getting into school. In the meantime, Mm -hmm. whole time you there beating your own self up because you feel like you don't deserve the accomplishments or you're not as good as other people in your lives. If we have that self-doubt, even if we've achieved things in the past, it's going to make us like almost self-sabotage because we feel like, well, I'm not going to apply for that. I don't think I'm going to get in. I'm not going to shoot my shot in them DMs because I don't (laughs) think they're going to like me. You'd be surprised how much these thoughts influence our behavior and how we feel about ourselves and just impact some of the goals and just ideas we have for ourselves. I agree. So these thoughts are never going to stop. All pop up for us, but we have to be able to push that little voice to the side and say, now, wait a minute. This is not how this is going to go. And question, where did I get these rules from? Oh, definitely. I think it goes back to that. And I think taking things into context, like, you know, by now everybody knows we're in the midst of a pandemic. So sometimes things can be more stressful, emotionally charged. I think processing that a bit more kindly helps. Of course, we know that with all of these subtypes of imposter syndrome we're not being kind to ourselves when we're thinking those things we wouldn't tell that to our loved ones yeah yeah definitely break the silence how we started talking about it in grad school it just made me google it's like is it normal for grad students to feel like they shouldn't have got accepted to grad school and it just like so much results came up of how so many people were experiencing this thing. They gave it this term, this imposter syndrome. I'm like, oh, they're right. I do feel like (laughs) it was like the perfect name to it. Because when you're thinking it, no one is actually saying, I feel like an imposter. But you're just questioning uh, your place and the validity of the achievement that you've had. And so when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk about this tomorrow and I go. And then when I brought it up and everyone else felt it, it was just, wow, it's not just me, you know? And this mm-hmm. is why you have to sometimes fact check your thoughts. And I think when you, when you talk to others and they're able to tell you or give feedback and say, you know, yeah, I actually view as someone who's quite successful. I view you as someone who's doing really well. I view you mm-hmm. as someone who's an excellent partner. That makes you feel good. It makes you feel validated and you realize, you know, maybe they're right. It helps to like kind of bring you, like snap you out of it. Because when it's all in your mind, you go for days, yes. Just feeling like you didn't deserve anything. Ooh, fact checking is key. Like the people around you, they will help you to reassess your reality Mm -hmm. and help you to see like, hmm. I think you can be a little too hard on yourself. Like, what are you talking about? And why are you saying you always do this or you never do this? That's not true. Yeah. Maybe that's four out of ten times that you did or didn't do that. 
Like, what are you talking about? It also helps learn to roll with the punches mm -hmm. and make mistakes. Yeah. I'm going to make mistakes. You preach it. This is a natural part of, it's not even just adulthood at this point. It's a natural part of life. There's going to be times where you're not going to get something 100% correct. So, you know, you're learning. We're learning and making these mistakes and failing sometimes really helps you to learn. This is okay. What can I learn from this? And then like changing the narrative of what you think that means for you when you make a mistake. When you make a mistake, learning to take constructive criticism. So learn and take it seriously, but not personal. Like people are here to help you. The biggest thing that I've also learned about making mistakes, it's important to recognize it as an opportunity to learn. Sometimes we do things and we do things well, and mm -hmm. we may not know or be able to articulate why we did it well. But when you mm -hmm. don't do something well and you make a mistake or you might fail at something, you're able to recognize when you get that criticism, okay, so this is what I did, but I can improve if I do this. And it helps you to have a better understanding as to how you can achieve this task successfully. So just realizing that it's an opportunity to improve yourself. It's not necessarily a situation where you're being deemed incompetent. It takes time because no one wants to fail. You know, mm -hmm. no one wants to fail. We want to get it right on the right first try. But like we said before, we have to manage these expectations, people. We're not perfect. <laughs> We're not perfect. So if we look in a room around us and we feel like, oh, everyone is just so smart. Why do we feel mm -hmm. like we aren't also smart if we're in a room with, with other them. people? Yes. <laughs> with why, them. why do we then feel as if I'm the imposter? I need to work harder to to feel like I could measure up to other people. Why can't we look around in the room and realize, wow, we're all brilliant and I could potentially learn from these other people. Person. So your value as a worthy and intelligent person is separate from the value that other people in the room could give you. Yeah. So like, no matter if you achieve this thing or if you can do this thing quickly or easily, you're still worthy as opposed to like attaching that to how quickly you can do this task or based on whether someone said your boss says that was a really good report yes everybody a round of applause for marissa please yes 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 and the next week when you don't get just like wait, wait a minute now <laughs> yeah and even like this whole idea of time. So even though things might not happen in the time span that we want it, it doesn't take away from the value or the successfulness of that achievement. We don't have to finish certain things within a certain time frame. And that's one of the scripts that we have. I need to finish this by this time or else I'm incompetent or else I'm an imposter or else I'm not good at this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. And so this is why we have to develop a new script. At some point we need help and that's okay needing help with something doesn't mean you're a failure everybody needs help and then like if you actually say like this is something that i want to work on like maybe you could ask the person who you know is good at it hey could you help me out with this another big thing is that we need to start celebrating our achievements no mm -hmm. matter how small we need to celebrate mm -hmm. them i think a lot of times we get so focused on our goals that we kind of just we did something great and we just like immediately just keep on moving on to the next one. went over your head. Yeah. And we don't take the time to just sit down and say, I did good at this. I'm going to reward myself for this. And this is how a lot of times we don't recognize our strengths because we're almost like just hamsters on the wheel, you know, just constantly tempting to achieve the next thing and the next thing after that. Mm -hmm. And then one way to do that too, volunteering and being a mentor to people like if you're able to teach that person it or explain to them about it and they get it, chances are you know what, that, like you know what you're doing. Um, but there's another layer to it, like being, serving as a mentor and being a volunteer, just giving mm -hmm. sometimes is enough to just fill you up and make you feel like, wow, I'm doing something really good. 
Like this is an awesome thing about me. Sometimes we can feel uncomfortable receiving all of that. And that could be because of, you know, sometimes the messages we get in society is like, if you're confident, you're boasting. When it's really like, no, I recognize these things that I'm doing that I like about myself. And it's okay for me to like these things about myself. And it's okay for somebody else to recognize them too. Like, you know, I'm out here looking good for me, myself and I, but I love it when others you know, really appreciate and admire and respect the greatness that's in front of them. Ah, yes! You know what I mean? Another helpful tool is to write down your accomplishment. You know, when you don't write it down or just have it there, like just plainly laid out, it's very easy to kind of just be like, what did I do? What did I do these, these past couple of years? Even like the whole concept of a list, sometimes you need that, that visual reminder that mm, that's not really true. And with your friends, that verbal reminder, like, no, no, that's not <laughs> That's not how it was. Yeah. I think just keeping these tips in mind that we spoke about and just try to exercise them as often as you can whenever these thoughts pop up because mm -hmm. we're all going to enter into new situations and question our capabilities. That's natural, but we have to have the level of self-awareness to recognize. I've, mm -hmm. I've overcome challenges like this before and I have the skill set and the tools to overcome them again. Mm -hmm. And I think just using some of the suggestions that we made you could let us know if they're helpful, how they've helped you, but try them out and see, see if it makes you feel like it less like an imposter. Yeah, so let us know guys. So we're at the end of today's episode. And we wanna say thanks so much for listening. We see you and we appreciate you. You can keep up with us on Instagram at Adulted Loading Podcast for the latest updates. See you next time. Later!